Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, the content executive of Higher Things, and today I'll be interviewing me. That's right, solo project. Driving to school by myself. This is when you can pl play the music real, real loud and sing along, and the only person hearing it is you and like eight people watching this. I am going to be talking about the things that you see in church and asking myself questions and then answering them uh, as if I were, I don't know, walking around Target talking to myself while, again, people look at me weird. Welcome to why we usually have guests. So today we are going to be heading right towards the fifth Sunday in Easter, and it is a, a time to look at the hymn of the day, which is an absolute phenomenal hymn. Dear Christians, one and all, rejoice. This is like this is like the free bird of, of hymnody because it's long. It's 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 really long, but it still brings it. It 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 slaps, it bumps. I'm I'm here for it. Dear Christians, one and all, rejoice is a hymn by Martin Luther that talks about sort of the whole encapsulation of of, of what it is to be a Christian, and it is a, a great call to to be together inside of it. Um, there is a, a commentary on this hymn that says the I becomes we in the congregation of the redeemed and that's a really profound thing that when I walk into church more often than not I feel very much sort of quarantined off because I've got my own personal guilt and my own personal shames I've got all of my own personal baggage and I sit down in the pew and want just sort of a personal relationship with Jesus where absolutely I won't have to depend on anybody else ever knowing that I happen to need him too. And so it, it sort of walls us off. And this is a great thing that the devil loves to do is he sort of takes us all in our own little spot and, and says, you are alone here. And it, it's a painful thing to, to feel that way. Um, it, it's, it's, it's sort of like uh, when you want more than anything just to feel connection uh, because you, you actually feel lonely and you look around and don't think anybody actually feels like you or, or even just you're having a great day and you look around and you want somebody to share it with and everybody's just sort of minding their own business and staring at the hymn and the peace of the Lord feels awkward to share. Um, when we find ourselves this way, we're reminded that the I becomes we in the congregation of the redeemed, that you and I are bound together in Christ who bled and died for us both and that my secret sins are not mine, but Jesus' sins. He takes them away from me. He ties them to the cross. And there, uh, I, I, I am met with the same forgiveness and life and salvation that you have. And so it's not simply that we are bound together and that nobody's perfect or, or bound together and that we all have bad days sometimes, but that we are bound together in he who has conquered death to save us from them. Dear Christians, one and all rejoice with exaltation singing and with united heart and voice and holy rapture singing, proclaim the wonders God has done, how his right arm the victory won, what price our ransom cost. And see, this is the foundation of who we are collectively together in Christ. And this is an Easter season to, to celebrate it because here we're, we're right in the middle of, of trying to deal with what it's like to, to go forward from the empty tomb and relate to how it is that God would deal with us in his church today, how it is we deal with each other. The, the exuberance of Easter Sunday has come and gone, but we still have to, to figure it out. Um, and this hymn gives us a chance to sort of lay out all the pieces. Um, by what this do you mean, Pastor Goodman? Oh, let me answer you, me. Uh, in the, the next couple of um, stanzas of the hymn, uh, Luther dives into uh, the muck and the mire. He, he, he stands there at the bottom of the pit and describes what it's like to actually wrestle with sin and lose. Um, fast bound in Satan's chains I lay, death brooded darkly o'er me, sin was my torment night and day, in sin my mother bore me, but daily deeper still I fell, my life became a living hell, so firmly sin possessed me. That we struggle, all of us in this world, um, especially as Christians, to, to do what is right, and honestly, it, the, the, the more we try and fail it, it almost, the harder we fall. It's one thing when I fail something I'm not trying at, but it's a whole different thing to actually really care about a thing, try your best at it, and still come up short. And to feel like it is a living hell is just this, to feel utterly apart, to feel like it is just me here yelling up my prayers to a God who sits far away from me in heaven and maybe hears me and maybe answers and all of the places I am alone. Uh, to, to be in hell is to be separated from God and also from his saints, his angels, his archangels. Uh, but, but to be in heaven is to simply be near Jesus. 
And wherever Jesus goes, he brings heaven with him, all of the angels and archangels and all of the saints along them. And so that this redeemed congregation, all of these, these baptized saints washed in the blood of Jesus, we, we get to sing this together because every last one of us knows what it feels like to be, feel at least, cut off from God, even if we aren't, because he, he chases us down. We know what it's like to, to feel cut off from each other, even though we are bound together here. Um, we, we understand the condition all too well. And when we find ourselves in the middle of the pit, for some reason, it's just our idea that we have to crawl back out of it on our own. Uh, the next stanza, my own good works all came to naught, no grace or merit gaining, free will against God's judgment, fought dead to all good remaining. My fears increased till sheer despair left only death to be my share, the pangs of hell I suffered. Again, he, Luther's trying to save himself, and the more he tries, the, the, the more he fails. The, the idea of, of having free will, um, it is something that Christians really kind of go back and forth on, and we take kind of a, a unique position on this, that if you're really just going to let me be in charge of things, I'm a sin. When I do anything that's that's even in line with God's commandments, it's because I think I'm getting something from it. Um, I'm caring about the people that I, I care about, I, that, I, that I love, but the others are harder. Um, that, that if I'm giving free will, it's usually just to rebel against God. Uh, that I don't have free will to desire him. I don't have free will to love the things of God. And, and so my, my free will is usually exercised either to save myself or to run from God. Uh, but he would not let simply this be the end of the hymn. No, no. How many stanzas is it, Pastor Goodman? Oh, it's 10 stanzas long. Here we go. God had seen my wretched state before the world's foundation, and mindful of his mercy is great, he planned for my salvation. He turned to me a father's heart. He did not choose the easy part, but gave his dearest treasure. God said to his beloved son, it is time to have compassion. Then go, bright jewel of my crown, and bring to all salvation. From sin and sorrow set them free. Slay bitter death for them, that they may live with you forever. We have God the Father and God the Son working together in this redemption along with the Holy Spirit. This is not sort of God saying, well, uh, I'm going to pick a favorite kid and it's definitely not Jesus, it's you. So I'm going to punish him because I hate him and he's just going to have to deal with that and you're just going to get the benefits of it. No, the son goes willingly to be a part of this. This is not simply the father saying, I need somebody to punish and I guess it's going to be Jesus. The son goes willingly to bear your sins upon the tree to save you that you would live with him. It's not divine child abuse. It, it's not anything so, uh, let's smirk and recognize that there's pain in this world together because at least we can sort of say that with some degree of control. Rather, it's that in the midst of despair and feeling so alone, God reaches down and, and he works good for us. He works salvation for us. He joins us in the pit and he carries us back out through his death and resurrection and, and then carries us forward. The son of God was born of the virgin. Uh, he has fulfilled the law. He has borne the form of a servant. He, he bore uh, the, the, the form of, of uh, a captive. He was slain wearing the crown of thorns and then he has risen from the dead. He, uh, to stanza seven says, to me he he said, stay close to me, I am your rock and castle. Your ransom I myself will be, for you I strive and wrestle. For I am yours and you are mine, and where I am you may remain. The foe shall not divide us. The we of the redeemed is not even just sort of all of us sinners in it together to try and do something better. It's that God is with us in the midst of the congregation. The we is that you are never alone because Jesus joined you in word and in sacrament, in body and in blood, in that font, in that word spoken and preached, declared to you. You are not alone, but God is with you and for you. This is where we find peace, that church is not about Jesus. It is where Jesus is for you so that you don't have to be alone. Though he will shed my precious blood, me of my life bereaving, all this I suffer for your good, be steadfast and believing. Life will from death the victory win. My innocence shall bear your sin, and you are blessed forever. The call here is not to be saved, but to be steadfast. And that means that some days are just going to kick you real, real hard, and you'll still be baptized. To be steadfast isn't to simply never have pain, never have weakness, never be a sinner, but it is when you are a sinner and guilty, when you are hurt and alone, when you are cut off and, and feeling apart from God, it is to cling to the promise that you are not alone, that you are not a sinner, that all the things that look true aren't because Christ is risen from the dead. And so when he speaks as one who has conquered death, he speaks as one who is in control of creation. And so if he says you don't have any sins anymore, it's because he took them away. 
you don't have them, they're forgiven. And if he says your life is yours now and even death cannot destroy it, even if you are barreling towards the grave and you can hardly move your neck and the joints are all out of whack, there is a resurrection that is coming. He promises all of these things and simply says to be steadfast is to hear those promises over and over again because, because that's what is going to endure. It's not that we won't flinch. It's not that we won't waver. It's not that we will always be bold and courageous. It's that when we hear the promises of God, the Holy Spirit works and it keeps us in them where it's safe. Pastor Goodman, what's the next stanza? Well then, now to my father I depart from earth to heaven ascending and heavenly wisdom to impart the Holy Spirit sending in trouble he will comfort you and teach you always to be true and into truth shall guide you that it's a gift that the sun ascended into heaven. It's a gift that I don't find Jesus walking along in one city at any time where I catch him going on tour and hopefully get my problems fixed. It's that he is wherever his word is preached and his sacraments are administered. He's wherever the Holy Spirit is offering comfort and hope to you. The truth shall set you free. The truth shall guide you in that way. And the truth and the life is Jesus. It's actually a really great thing to find a church that's just full of trouble because that's where God always puts himself, right in the midst of trouble for you. What on earth have done, excuse me, what I on earth have done and taught guide all your life and teaching, so shall the kingdom's work be wrought and honored in your preaching. But watch lest foes with base alloy the heavenly treasure should destroy this final word I leave you. Hang on to the word in the sacraments, kids. Listen to the promises of God. The hymn that we're singing right now, all 10 stanzas, 10 stanzas that's the whole road trip right there just rocking out to freebird windows down music up this is singing about the promise because there's at least one person having the worst day of their life in church and trying desperately to hide it and you get to sing to them the whole work of christ in this hymn so you might need to sit one out just catch your breath let somebody else sing that's okay come back around to it sing for your neighbor sing for yourself sing because this is what we believe put into action so that you don't have to sort of look around and feel alone but you can recognize that you are a part of the body of christ that you are knit together under him who is the head who has carved his way out of death unto life and promises you the same so that whatever is going on right now that makes you feel alone you get to sing together and not just with each other, but with the angels and the archangels and with all the company of heaven. So that's the Drive to School podcast. Thank you for letting me interview myself. I was going to talk to myself anyway. You just got to watch. <laughs>